working on a traction engine which is similar to a Mini Part 3. Removing the flywheel and the water pump eccentric sheave, I make a pair of bronze bushes to take up the side plane and the crankshaft. And while testing the engine, there was another problem. This traction engine is very finely made and very well engineered, but some of the aspects of it are a bit of a puzzle. In this episode, I find out that all is not what it seems. I need to remove the flywheel and the eccentric sheave. The flywheel is held to the crankshaft using two very small Allen type group screws. Had I have made this traction engine, I wouldn't have done it this way. I would have at least used larger group screws. These are very fine. And the problem is, the crankshaft is badly marked from someone previously taking off the flywheel and not realising there were two grub screws, not one. The second grub screw cut a very neat helical groove in the crankshaft itself, so you can only take off the flywheel by rotating it in the direction of the groove. With the flywheel removed and out of the way, I move to the other side. This is the water pump eccentric sheave. If I want to be picky, I do not like the way that these eccentric straps are made. They're basically just brass rings over a brass eccentric sheave. The water pump drive rod looks like it's been silver soldered to the ring. To free off the pump ram operating arm, I need to remove one bolt, which allows me to take a cap off the end and just slide the part off. Which is not as easy as it seems, because it really is a very good fit. I had to very carefully lever off this part, and with a bit of patience I eventually removed this cap from the eccentric sheave. This allows me to move the pump ram operating arm out of the way. At first I couldn't see how the eccentric sheave was held to the crankshaft. It's so small, even with my reading glasses, I couldn't see what it was. But in the end, I did see that it was a very fine slot-headed grub screw. I need to remove this grub screw, and luckily, a few weeks back, I bought this really excellent and very comprehensive set of screwdriver bits. They are very small indeed. I really bought this set to repair my glasses, because they're forever falling apart. And the problem is, if it's my reading glasses that fall apart, which it usually is, how can I see what I'm doing? I selected a suitable bit from the set and fitted it into the handle, and this made it very easy to remove the grub screw. This screwdriver set is excellent, and it's far better than the normal miniature screwdriver sets that I've bought in the past. With this set I can apply far more pressure, and it doesn't screw up the head like the smaller screwdrivers do. Why am I removing the flywheel and the eccentric sheave? Here's a flashback to show you the problem that I had. There was far too much end float at both ends between the flywheel and the bearing and the eccentric sheave and the bearing. This allowed the crankshaft to move from side to side. During one of the initial tests, the whole crankshaft went out of alignment and the crankweb collided with the bulkhead. With the exception of the boiler, most of the parts of this traction engine appear to be made from brass. I'm going to make a couple of collars, one for each side of the crankshaft, but I'm going to use bronze. Brass is OK for quite a lot of components for model steam engines. But as a bearing material, quite frankly, it's rubbish. Even though a lot of engines are made out of brass and they seem to work OK, but brass bearings are really not a good idea. Gunmetal or bronze is far better. And even though gunmetal, bronze and brass do look quite similar, they are all entirely different. There is one alloy that this may be called alum bronze, which is quite tough stuff to machine and wears really well. It's only when I come to part off these bushes that you can see that it is definitely not brass. The chippings do not come off like brass. And here it's making a very different sound as I part off the first of the bushes. I showed an image of the centre drill earlier, but I didn't show the drilling operation. But suffice to say, I drilled a quarter of an inch diameter hole in the centre quite a long way down this piece of bar. I'm really not making excuses, but the hormone drugs that I'm currently taking for prostate cancer are seriously affecting my short-term memory. I've had the radiotherapy, now I just need to stay on this drug till the end of July, which can't come soon enough. 
What I'm doing here is filing off the helical groove that's in the crankshaft. I'm using a small flat needle file for this and trying very hard not to take too much metal off. Here I'm using a hammer to gently realign the crankshaft so that the connecting rod runs exactly in the centre of the slot in the bulkhead. I really don't recommend using hammers for this job. This one was close to hand and it did the job perfectly and I didn't hit it very hard. Once I'd lined up the crankshaft it was a very simple job to fit the other bush at the other side and refit the eccentric sheave and here it is ready to go. I'm giving it a bit of a brutal test, pushing it into forward and reverse very quickly. You should be able to do this without event, but in this case, one of the eccentric rods fell off the eccentric sheave. And when I looked at it, to my horror, it is soft soldered. This is not good, but I'm going to live with it. I didn't show how I put it all back together because I couldn't get a clear shot. Basically all I did was pack up the eccentric rod, hold it against the eccentric sheave in the correct position, which was obvious by the marks left by the previous soldering job, and then heat the part with a small blowtorch, which for once didn't burst into flame and burn my hand. I did this job very carefully, and the layers of solder on both the eccentric sheave and the eccentric strap just melted back together. Job done. Time for another test. I put some pressure on the expansion link to put a bit of load on the eccentric straps and everything seemed to be fine. I cannot stress how important it is not to use soft solder on highly stressed components. If you want to silver solder parts that have previously been soft soldered, it can be very difficult. The first thing you need to do is remove all traces of the soft solder from the components Apply some silver solder flux and heat the parts to a sufficient temperature that the silver solder flows. When I put a load on the flywheel it started making a horrible knocking noise. So what's going on here? The solution was simple. The Allen grub screws were not tight enough on the shaft and the flywheel was rocking about. That was soon put right and now it runs very sweetly. And there's no possible way that the crankshaft can move out of alignment. This final part is running in slow motion, and as you can hear, it's running very well. I must have resoldered the eccentric strap and the eccentric sheave back together in precisely the same place that it was to start with. And that concludes this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. The question is, is the boiler also soft-soldered? I will find this out in due course in a future episode. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.